Hey everyone, welcome to the Coding Zoo. If this is your first time joining, my name is Shane and this is the Coding Zoo Java playlist. In today's lesson, we are going to cover multi-dimensional arrays, multi-dimension arrays in Java. So if you're not familiar with a, what a multi-dimensional array is compared to a regular array, uh, stick around, we're going to jump right in. All right, so if you see on my desktop here, I have a class, and that class is called multidimensional array. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a main method to it, static main method, so I can run uh, the code that's in this class. So in a previous lesson, we learned how to create an array. Uh, for example, this would be a string array. And that array has one entry. How would I create an array that has multiple dimensions? In other words, instead of just having uh, one index and one cell, it has uh, multiple cells, kind of like a, a row, like, a, like each cell has an array inside of it, right? That's, a, like a, that's called a multiple dimensional array. So you have two indexes or more, you can have n number of indexes, which can get very confusing. Um, the most I've seen to be used is usually like two. But picture having a string array. Now in that string array, the first entry, you have another array that can hold two or three strings, or however many you want to set it to. So let's say instead of having a student's array, I wanted to have a homeroom array. So we're going to have an array that represents multiple homeroom classes, right? So how would I do that? Well, um, I'm gonna go string, and I'm gonna do my bracket just like I normally would do. And next I'm gonna go ahead and add another bracket. So this is going to be a multi-dimensional array of just gonna have two dimensions, right? So I'm gonna do equals and a new, whoop, I forgot to put my variable name, homeroom equals new string my first bracket now how many entries do i want in this array let's just do two homeroom classes so i'm gonna have two homeroom classes now in each homeroom let's say it's a small school uh let's say it is only uh two people in each room i think they can consolidate those homerooms it's a big age difference that's what it is all right so go ahead and I have new string bracket with the, uh, the size I want it to be, and then another bracket with the size I want it to be. Now press enter. Now let's go ahead and put entries in that home room. So let's go ahead and specify what students are in my home room uh, zero, my first home room class. So I'm gonna do home room zero, zero, and I'm gonna put myself there, Shane. So I'm in homeroom zero, I'm the first student there, hence the index zero. Keep in mind arrays are zero based, not one based. So if you wanted to access the first entry in an array, you use zero. If you wanted to access the second entry in an array, you use one. Third entry, two, and so forth. All right, homeroom. Uh, I'm still gonna add another student to the first homeroom. I'm gonna add a one. Can't type today. And let's let's add, um, let's see, let's add Nick. Nick's my son. Nick and I are in the same homeroom. So that's the first homeroom. Now, how do I go ahead and put something, uh, how do I go ahead and create a second homeroom list? Well, I'm gonna do homeroom. And I'm gonna use the index of one. So now I'm specifying uh, the next homeroom. The next homeroom, I'm going to put zero. And let's put uh, equals. I'm going to put Faith, which is my daughter. And I'm going to go ahead and add another student in there with her. And it's homeroom one. It's the second homeroom. And I'm going to put uh, another person, which would be the second one, which again, in a zero-based 
entry would be, uh, the second one would be one, not two. And I'm going to add, uh, let's add Ting. Ting's my Y. All right. So now I have an array that represents two classes. Let's see what that looks like. So let's do a sys out. And let's print our home room. Spelled it wrong. There we go. I'm going to save it and run it. And we get this jibber jabber here, right? So let's change that to uh, using the arrays utility class. I'm going to do a two string on that array. Let's just go ahead and do a deep two string. And let's print that out. All right, so there is my array. It has arrays inside of it. So I have the first array, which is Shane and Nick. And I have the second array, which is Faith and Ting. So there's two dimensions to this. There's the mentioned, think of these as like rows. And um, different rows in a given array. And I can hear my dog barking in the background. Her name's Bella. She's going to get in trouble when I get off here. Okay, so uh, let's look at that a different way. So let's look at, for, I just want to access, so I just want to access the uh, first home room. How would I see what's just in the first home room, right? I'm going to do arrays, deep, let's just do two string, and I'm going to do home room, but I'm going to put an index of one. So I'm going to access the second home room in the home room array. I'm going to print that out. Let's run it. And there we go. I can, I've can. i got my first array. It's got second array, rather. My second home room. It's got faith and team inside of it. Now I could do the first home room. Change this to the zero index for the first entry in the array. Run it. And there is my uh, first home room, Shane and Nick. So this is a way to um, save groups of data within a, an array, arrays within arrays, basically. Um, and again, you can type this to strings or integers or objects, any other, any types of objects you want to. Uh, pretty simple, pretty simple. Uh, so that's it um, for this lesson. Uh, I hope that makes sense to you. If not, if you have any questions, just leave me a message below and I will get back to you uh, keep in mind, multidimensional arrays can have multiple dimensions, more than just two. Uh, you can have arrays within arrays within arrays. You can you can keep going. So again, that's it for today. If you uh, if you like this video, please click the like button below. If you haven't subscribed, go ahead and click subscribe. Click that bell icon so you'll get notifications of our next videos. Uh, we are covering everything from Java, JavaScript, you name it. We're going to eventually get to it. So my goal is coding is to help others learn how to program. Uh, I hope that was this video was helpful to you. I hope to see you again next time. Have a great week. Bye.